Hey, hey, Ralph here. Uh, welcome back to the RHCSA Tip of the Week. Uh, today, I'm not going to talk about a specific skill uh, that would be required for the exam, but more talk about a preparation technique. Uh, one of the things that I always find to be very effective is to to create your own practice exams. We often, you know, people will go out and ask me about where's a good place to find a practice exam and things like that. And the best place the, to find a practice exam is actually from within. Uh, when you can put yourselves in the shoes of the examiner uh, and really think about how how would I create a situation where I could test that particular concept becomes a very useful tool in terms of your own personal preparation. So let me give you some idea about what I'm talking about uh, and then uh, give you some hints on how you might want to go about uh, this same uh, process. So First of all, obviously, we want to start with the with the exam objectives here, right? I mean, that is these are the concepts that uh, Red Hat has determined are going to be part of the exam. So when I start thinking about how am I going to create my own practice exam, what I want to think about is, you know, treating this like a punch list, going line by line, and then asking the question, how would I test that persistently, right? So what would be a persistent way that I could test that and maybe you're going to be combining you know particular um, concepts you know the goal here is not for me to write a practice exam during this this tip of the week but just sort of show you uh, some techniques you know and so when we look at for example here we have the use input output redirection uh, and then the other concept is use grep and regular expression to analyze text you know so for example you know we could say as a sample question looking at those two concepts say uh, output you know all lines in Etsy password you know that end in bash to a file root password dot out just as an example so again you're thinking about all right so I'm the examiner and these are the objectives that I have to test my um, the examinee on if you will and so how do I create you know a situation where I can test that the user knows how to use grep and regular expression and then also this would include you know input output uh, redirection as well so that's just and again what you're trying to do here is you're trying to come up with uh, 30, 40, you know, 50, uh, 60 different items, you know, to uh, to test these concepts. And again, just kind of go line by line, come up with, you know, multiple ways that you could test, you know, those particular concepts. You know, the other things here, um, you know, so some of this is easy to think about, you know, if you're the, you know, if you're writing a test, create, delete, copy, and move files and directories. Um, you know, what would be a way we could do that? You know, we could say make a directory called, you know, let's say root backup and copy Etsy star, all files in Etsy, however you want to say it, to the directory. Yeah, a relatively simple task right in a lot of ways but again that's a way of testing you know that particular concept you know when you think about it, you look at something like you know creating hard links and soft links and that that's pretty straightforward right create a link to this file or create a symbolic or a soft link to uh, this particular directory but actually sitting down and basically building your own practice exam to make you think like the examiner is going to be very very useful from your uh, you know from your preparation and again you can start you know combining things it says list set and change standard POSIX permissions right so now we've said we've created this directory root backup and then we could say you know set the permissions for owner access only or whatever it may be so now we've combined multiple things and we could even continue to combine that we could say instead of copy 
you know, the Etsy star, we could, let's say that we bring in, you know, you know, the tar command, which is a little bit farther down. So we could say, create a tar archive, you know, called etsy.tar and then copy that to the directory, you know. So there's a lot of different things that you can do here, but the whole idea here is to get you thinking like, like the exam writer and you spending time thinking about how you would create this exam. And then once you've come up with your, you know, your 50 items, then what you can do is you can kind of block them. You know, you block them into, you know, 20 to 25 items. And there you have your practice test, right? So you just pull 25 items from the 50, 60 items that you've created on your list, and now you have your own practice exams. Okay? So, but the important thing here is really going through the process. I mean, for me to sit here and make a video and say, well, how would I do this and how would I do that? That's not the important thing, you know, because the, the learning and the depth comes from you actually taking the time to write your own practice exams, you know? So I don't really wanna go through and like say, how would I write a practice exam here? But I'm just giving you some ideas about how this would be done. You know, they talk about adding partitions and you know, that type of thing. Now, obviously, you know, we create a partition and this mount point or, or whatever it may be um, when you're going through, you know, those particular, uh, each particular item. Okay? But I find that this is a very, very beneficial exercise. You know, I learn a lot more in my preparation to teach a class than if I'm just sort of studying a concept on my own and it's not something that I'm going to have to present to others. Okay? And that's because of the depth that I use. And I also, you know, I also put myself in both you know, my shoes as the instructor and then also the shoes of the student in terms of, you know, how are they going to comprehend what I say and how am I going to scaffold this concept? So if you can go out and put yourself in the, you know, in the shoes of the examiner, I think you'll find that, you know, it'll really give you more depth and understanding, you know, really thinking about, well, how would I test that? And again, you know, by doing that, you will be more prepared uh, for the exam. So hopefully uh, that helps, you know, I think that that is a, you know, a very useful way to prep, prepare for an exam. Now, once you have your practice test, the, the next thing is like, well, how do I, you know, how do I actually execute uh, on practicing, right? And so you have to have some type of, you know, test environment, you know, as part of preparation for this exam, whether you're working on physical machines, you're working on virtual machines, you have to have some type of press, you know, test environment, you know, with, you know, with the classes that I teach, you know, we always give our students six months access to, um, you know, to, to the prep environment so that they can use our prep environment and just access things through a browser. But there are uh, a number of different ways that you could uh, set up a prep environment. If you're going to do it locally, then virtualization software is nice. Uh, I use, you know, VirtualBox mostly for all my local virtualization. Uh, and really, you can just create virtual machines with, uh, you know, with CentOS 7. And, you know, that should be sufficient for preparing uh, for the exam. The nice thing with virtualization is that, you know, you can go into the settings of a particular uh, device and you could come into storage and I can easily add additional hard drives and things like that for my uh, partitioning work. But whatever you choose in terms of how you set up your prep preparation environment, you know, it's going to have to involve you actually working through, you know, these practice exams that you create or, um, you know, finding other resources. But uh, again, I think that one of the things that you can really do uh, to benefit uh, yourself is to create practice exams. So hopefully uh, that tip helps and we'll see you. We'll see you again.